Have you ever wondered what superheroes and project managers have in common? While they seem worlds apart, there are surprising parallels between the challenges they face and the strategies they each employ. In this episode, Parallels Between Comic Book Heroes and Project Managers, we'll explore five key areas where comic book heroes and project managers share similarities from problem solving and leadership to resource management and communication. By understanding these parallels, we gain valuable and fun insights into effective project management techniques and the qualities that make great leaders. But first, welcome to the Hope Is Not A Plan podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Pinnell, bringing you over 20 years of experience in project management, leadership, and fitness. This podcast is your go-to guide for turning big hopes into reality. We're talking project planning, execution, staying fit, and so much more. Think practical advice, expert tips, and motivation in every episode. Join me on our journey to transform dreams into action. Find us online at hopeisnotaplan.org. Follow me on social media at Hope's Not a Plan on Twitter and Instagram, or visit Hope is Not a Plan on YouTube or Facebook. Share the show with your friends, subscribe on Apple, Spotify, or your favorite platform, and please leave a review to help spread the word. Remember, everyone, hope ignites, but it's action that transforms. Let's get into this episode. Three, two, one. I love superheroes. I've loved comic books since I was little. They're so mainstream now because of the Marvel franchise, DC. But for me, I'm a longtime comic book collector. I have a huge collection. I know all the background. So I try not to be too, too judgy with the movies. And I think that overall done a good job. But I also realize, as I've talked about here on the show and in life, there are parallels to processes, to personalities, to leadership styles that we can learn from in many different avenues. So someone that's in construction can learn really good leadership and planning and someone in healthcare can learn from that. Someone that's in public safety can learn from somebody that's a teacher, like all this, right? So for me, I thought, you know, and I've thought about this a little bit before, what about superheroes? What about those teams? One time I talked about the different makeups of a superhero team and the positions they might be on a project team. Well, now I'm going to talk about some specific heroes and what they show and their skill sets and then what kind of project management I think they would use in five key areas. And those areas are problem solving and adaptability, leadership and team building, resource management and prioritization, communication and collaboration, and resilience and perseverance. So let's go with problem solving and adaptability. The first person is Batman. He is, he's super smart. He has tons of resources and he pre-plans. He has plans, which they don't really get into as much uh, in the movies, but he has plans to take out everyone. Superman, Wonder Woman, they've played this out in some um, comic books where uh, Bat, you know, the most, the strongest, the Justice League have been taken over, mind controlled, and Batman has to fight him by himself, or he's fought the most powerful people, and he has no powers. Or he has no power, so he has to problem solve. So I think he's a waterfall guy. I think he's really good at the risk management aspect of knowing, okay, we're going to predict what could happen, and we're going to plan. We're going to accept the risk or mitigate it or go avoid it completely. To me, that's Batman to a T. Next up is Spider-Man, whose agility, literally... And quick thinking, again, help him. He does. He is pretty strong. Depending on the era of comic book, he can lift 10 or 20 tons. Plus, he has spider sense. He can move so fast. And he's just, he's awesome. He's a super well-rounded person. So he's hes very agile, right? So to me, that's an agile project manager. He's iterative planning, right? He, he can move literally his body so fast and adjust. He can take on whole teams by himself, and he has, which is amazing. Which for us as PMs, if we're agile... We can do the same thing, right? We can manage multiple projects at the same time. We can help multiple people on the team at the same time. That's part of our skill set. And then the third problem solver and adaptable person uh, or superhero I think of is Wonder Woman, right? She can do both. And that's the theme. I'm going to talk about a waterfall person, an agile person, a, a wagile or waterfall and agile combined. And she can problem solve and she adapts, right? She's super smart. She has some of the powers of the Greek gods and the mythology there, which includes some really smart folks, the wisdom of Solomon. She also is, is very strong and adaptable. She's been around for a long time. So she understands pre-planning, but she also understands the need to adapt with the times, right? Like um, when she met, you know, her love, it was in World War One, and then in modern times, she adapted with the Justice League, right? In modern times like that. So to me, the, the problem solvers, the key ones that my waterfall guy is Batman, my agile person is Spider-Man, and then Wonder Woman does both. She's got all the skills. Two, leadership and team building. When I think of leadership, the first person that comes to mind is Captain America. I mean, he's an ultimate leader through inspiration, 
right? He doesn't make people do things. He can't make all the people on his team do things, not the Hulk or Thor and maybe someone Iron Man, right? He has a diverse team of people from all different backgrounds, literally different worlds, and he builds camaraderie. He makes them want to work together when he says Avengers assemble. They're not doing it because he's holding a stick over their head like Thanos does or some other powerful bad guy. They're doing it because they want to do the right thing and they want to work with him. He's my waterfall guy that establishes clear roles on the team. I've talked about the importance of org charts. Critical, right? He knows who's who. He makes quick plans. A lot of parallels to Batman from that aspect, but he's, he's to me, much more bright and inspirational. The second person's Iron Man. Uh, High-tech knowledge, right? Super technical, super smart, determined. He, even though he has his fancy suit, he also has no powers. So he's had to push through when he's had no powers before, and that's determination. And he fosters collaboration when you talk about finding solutions for time travel or making the vision, which, you know, Ultron and that little whole thing, that's an agile thing. It's an iterative process. He was working with, when we think about the movies, Dr. Banner, and when you think about the iteration of his suits throughout the decades, that's an agile flow like release train right he's doing one testing it doesn't work add this thing subtract this thing he's so agile and then green arrow who doesn't get a lot of play time he's like batman with a bow and arrow and he wears tights in the comics and he's adapted thank goodness they've changed his outfit but he has tons of resources he's also a rich business person but he uses his influence again because he doesn't have power he's not going to make people do that and he's a bit of both of both he's motivational he's very in tune with the community there's a there's a storyline in the green era storyline where his pupil gets addicted to heroin where he's fighting that on the streets he's a street level guy and he's fighting against the heroin epidemic right so he's very motivated and he empowers people by using his wealth to help others. And we as project managers can think about how do we use all these resources we have? How do I use my leadership capital to help the team move forward, to help them work together really well? So leadership and team building, Captain America, Iron Man, and Green Arrow. Resource management and prioritization. Superman is number one on the list. You might think, well, he can do anything just on his own. And I agree, Supes is the OP superhero, but he's the go-to guy when everyone's like, who could be who? I'm like, "Uh," when Superman decides, he's just gonna win. So for him, to me, this is though, how do you use these resources? How do you use that incredible strength, that incredible, um, he's a super smart guy as well, and prioritize what you do. Because imagine Superman, you have all that power, you have all those resources in yourself, but who do you save first? What do you do first? So he balances his duty to his team, his duty to regular humans here on earth with his personal life, right? With Lois Lane, with taking care of folks, depending on some storylines with his, his kids, and that's, that's a waterfall thing to me. You have to realize, let's say we have you know, a finite amount of resources, a finite budget that we're given. We have to allocate those in the right way possible. And sometimes it does have to be in the perfect sequence when you're building a building or you're building something that builds on something else. It's got predecessors, right? So he, to me, in that balance, whereas Thor, who's similar, an off-world person who Thor has official duties, though, as a, as a royalty person, right, from Asgard. So he's balancing, how do I go be the prince of Asgard? And how do I use this science slash faith slash technology, whatever, however you want to look at the, the Norse mythology and the movies or the comics? How do I balance all that? And Thor, it seems, bases a lot of what he does as an agile person. That I'm going to say Thor's our agile person. A, a tasks based on value. So what's outcomes focused? Right. So if you've seen uh, spoiler alerts, if you've seen all the Avengers movies, you realize he makes this this Stormbringer, this axe right after he loses his his hammer that can kill Thanos. Right. So he has to understand I need to go and put my resource, which is me through taking this heat, through going to the forge, through doing all these things. And then he works closely with Groot, who cuts his own arm off and makes the handle on Stormringer, right? So, but it's based on the value that this thing will help us stop this bad thing or like in projects that it'll mitigate this huge risk or maybe the output of our project solves something, it saves, it's a cure. And then the Black Panther for me does all of that. He has both internal support that he has to focus on in Wakanda and he's like, hey, we have all this tech. I'm, you know, have this whole legacy of being the Black Panther which is important to us here, but I see the world having all these issues. I have to give that external support. And that's a wagile thing to me. That's a waterfall agile combo where how do we leverage these resources where, again, they use science where they do something and test it and go back and test it and change it. And Siri, his sister, right, uses all the science. She did that to try and save him, which 
Talk about a heartbreaker, man. If you've been touched by cancer, the Black Panther movie series, the second one, I cried like a baby in the beginning of that. But he also then looks at, okay, I don't have all these resources, right? Um, when we look at vibranium or we do, but how do we manage all that? And so resource management and prioritization to me are, are some heavy hitters, right? Superman, he's a waterfall guy. He's resource and budget focused. He's how do I, how do I use these resources for the best? Thor is an agile person. He's like going to move and change. He lost one thing and I'm going to make another one that stops this threat. And Black Panther is balancing constantly between those things of planning ahead, but also adapting to what's happening and changing their whole culture, right? To talk, to talk to the outside world, which we have to change our culture often on our teams, on our project teams, our official teams, based on what we see around us. The fourth category, communication and collaboration. Man, communication is so important. So the first person to me is the flash, right? With And his focus is speed of communication. If there's a message you need to get somewhere, the flash is the person you want to give it to or speedster, but he, he's it, right? He can get places in an, an unimaginable amount of speed. The, the movies are cool because he's super fast, but in the comic, he's so much more powerful. And that's what I love. They did a good job though, I'll say. So in Waterfall, to me, that's like, pre-planning communication. So the flash could just, he's so fast. We could say, Hey, just talk to everybody or talk to these 17 key people around the world, but he needs to know who these people are. Right? So we need to pre-plan that like we do in waterfall to say, Hey, here's our communications plan. Here's who we need to talk to, when we need to talk to him, how we're going to talk to him. And then if we get the flash going on that, Holy smokes, he's just there. He can use the methodology. He can deliver the message we gave him and he's got a plan and he's got, you know, GPS or maps or whatever he's using to get where he needs to go. The next person is Hawkeye, another non-powered person that uses a bow and arrow and he supports from a distance, right? So communication can do that for us. I think this aligns to me with an agile person where you have open collaboration, right? So if I'm the product owner on a scrum team, my team's doing all the work. We've set the standards. The scrum master's helping us stay in line with what we should do. I'm going to help set precedent early, right? Or, um, be given that from on high and then we go, okay, let's do these first. And then I'm gonna let the team do it and support them from afar and help with communications. And Hawkeye's all about distance, right? He can fight up close, but those special arrows are not meant to be used primarily, right? Hand to hand. They're meant from a distance, right? And he's really good at that. And we can support our teams from a distance as product owners, as scrum masters, and then back off and let them work. And as project managers too. And then the combination of this to me is, Dr. Strange, who is so collaborative. I mean, he literally collaborates with people from other dimensions, right? And there's so much value in that from collaborating with people that have an entirely different reality of view. In the movies, it's literally a different reality, but imagine that in the real world, right? And this is a agile, waterfall agile combo to me, right? Where we communicate at all levels. I think we still need to be open to iterating where we give objective, transparent updates to our leaders, and we come back and say, you know what? We tried that. It didn't work. We think this will work. What do you think? And we're going back and forth, but we've done some pre-planning. We've communicated. We know we're going to talk to our steering committee once a month. We know we're going to talk to our project team once a week or however often, right? So it's a combination of that with this communication and collaboration. And we 100% as project managers should be totally open to talking to people outside our organization, outside of our teams, to just share info, to get better, to learn, because none of us know all the answers. The fifth category, resilience and perseverance. This may be surprising, but I'm going to say the Hulk, right? He sometimes has to brute strength himself, but he gets angrier and angrier and stronger and stronger. And if you've ever read the comics or seen some of the movies, he's he's constantly being messed with because he's a big, scary dude. He goes and breaks things too. But the determination he has as he gets stronger and stronger, especially some of his big epic fights. Um, not really Thanos. That wasn't a good representation. I don't think in the comics, he fights some super powerful people and he has to just keep pushing and gets madder and madder and comes back and he wins. Right. And to me though, the long battle that the Hulk has with himself, with who he is, who he shouldn't be, what he should do, what he shouldn't do is like the messy project middle of a waterfall project. That's a year long where we've done all this planning. We're super psyched at the beginning we're building up, we're finding our strengths, we're mobilizing, we're normalizing, we're figuring out, maybe there's some rage points here and there. And then it's kind of boring and it's tough and we have to just keep doing the work and showing up. And sometimes you just have to do that. You have to trudge through. If you're deploying a bunch of devices, there's no getting around the fact that it's going to take time and 
how are we doing today? How many did we deploy? What worked well? What didn't? Let's do this again tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And that could take a long time depending on how much stuff you're putting out there. The next hero for me that's resilient and chose perseverance is Black Widow. Came from a super hard background, right? Plucked out of her life as a young person, thrown in this assassin school, physical and emotional hardships. Project managers have physical and emotional hardships, right? And as an agile way, via retros, via checking in a little more often than we do in our waterfall projects, we're going to learn from our failures, right? Black Widow learned that she didn't want to be an assassin or, or be in that machine that she was in before and became a good guy, right? And that was through reflection and learning from her failures or learning from her bad successes, which we can have, right? We can, we can go live on time as a project manager, but it wasn't great and people don't use it. That's happened to me. And the last person is Cyborg, right? Resilience and Perseverance. So the story of Cyborg, they show pretty well in the Justice League movies, right? He was a football star, got hurt. And then his father fixed him up by fusing him with this machine technology. You want to talk about adapting or think of think of real world heroes, like war heroes, like folks injured in war, like folks that are adaptive athletes in the Paralympics. Those are real superheroes, right? They have to adapt to having two fake legs or a fake left leg and a fake right arm. It's it's amazing resilience to show there, right? And, and for us, we have to have a blended approach. To me, this is a non-negotiable as a project manager and as a leader that we're going to have to get used to the messy middle of a project and we're going to have to keep our team upright and keep us upright, which goes back to how we're taking care of our mind and our body and our spirits. There's seven pillars, right? How we take an ownership of what we're doing how are we practicing mindfulness, getting movement, setting boundaries, making connections, working on our sleep and practicing faith. And Cyborg does all of those. He really does. Faith in himself, maybe faith in something bigger, but he has to learn from the failures of using his new gadgets that are part of him. He has to keep pushing as he adapts and his body adapts. He does a good job of it. So as project managers, whether you're using waterfall or agile or a blended approach, and I, I like all of them. We have to problem solve and be adaptable like Batman, Spider-Man, and Wonder Woman. We have to inspire through our leadership and build teams like Captain America, Iron Man, and Green Arrow do. We have to manage resources effectively and prioritize where we focus our strengths like Superman and Thor and the Black Panther do. We have to communicate and collaborate regularly like the Flash and Hawkeye and Doctor Strange do using all the resources available at all levels. And we have to be resilient and persevere like the Hulk, Black Widow, and Cyborg do, whether it's dealing with their emotions, their past, or this new reality they live in where they have to figure out what they do. I truly believe and, and hope you do too that by embodying these heroic traits, project managers can inspire their teams, drive projects to success more often, and make a lasting impact for the people they work with, work for, and who work for them. There is much more of this at hopeisnotaplan.org. Please follow the show and me at Hope's Not a Plan on X and Instagram. Hope is Not a Plan YouTube channel. Creep it up on that half a million views. Fitness 15 seconds at a time. There's also a Facebook page. Stay safe, everyone. Leverage your inner superhero. And I wish you all Godspeed. Godspeed.